Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. For so long I wanted to add an energy dashboard to my home assistant. However, my utility provider did not provide me for an API. They did provide me, however, with a website and a username and password to download my readings. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate this and get all of this data into your dashboard in Home Assistant. All right, so for getting started, all you need is a open RPA or a robotic process automation tool. And then you need to download and install import statistics, custom integration from Hacks, and create a script. And all of these resources are provided on the GitHub link in the description. I'm running OpenRPA on top of a Windows 11 mini PC, and the rest are running on a standard Home Assistant operating system on Raspberry Pi. Let's see a quick demo of the robot in action. As you can see, OpenRPA opens the browser. It logs in to my utility provider. It scrolls down. It finds the electricity consumption panel and the water consumption panel, triggers to daily utilization view, and then it proceeds with downloading the Excel uh, files from the provider. Then it opens the Excel files automatically and extracts the data into CSV files and finally shares them to the shared folder. Let's dive deeper into step one, RPA. Here I created a project and it contains a sequence the sequence has two subsequences or smaller workflows, if you will. The first one is login and download files, which has a couple of variables for username, password, and URL. It opens a Chrome tab, and it opens a URL, which is using the variable str URL or string URL. Then it proceeds with typing in the username again from a variable, which is str user or string username. You can of course record all these steps yourself using the OpenRPA, which will automatically generate the workflow for you. Then it proceeds to so clicking submit button for the username password. It adds a delay, this is very important because uh, of the race condition. You might want to wait for the browser to load and then it starts by getting the elements you wish. Again, some delays in between and then the download buttons you've seen in the demo. Again, another delay, very useful. And then finally close the tab of Chrome. Then the second workflow or sequence, which is converting the downloaded files. Of course, you want to read the Excel file of your utility provider, regardless of how it looks like. You can design that in your workflow. This is my username, my file name uh, that is coming from the provider. I read the range, as you can see from the Excel, get all the data I need, as well as getting the uh, variable of the month. And then finally write a CSV with this data table uh, variable, which is called DT Excel. And then proceed with reading the date, as I mentioned, from cell B2. Again, for the water, repeat the same process, write the CSV. And then finally close the workbooks. Add another delay. And then finally delete the downloaded files. This is very important because you want uh, the new files not to have the suffix of one, two, three, four. You want the file to always have the same file name. So you want to delete the previous ones. All right, so far so good. So step two is to run the scheduler to actually trigger the OpenRPA workflow. And for this, I am using Windows Task Scheduler. It's a pretty straightforward 
get basic create a basic task give it a name a description such as runs an open RPA workflow to get utility meter readings. All right. And then click next. You can do it on a daily, weekly schedule and then give it an hour to run during the day. Then click or choose start a program and then choose open RPA executable from program files and next just give it arguments dash workflow my id space and then we need to go to open rpa and actually get the workflow id from the uh, workflow which you can see here right click and copy id and then paste it space and click next and looks good finish and then you can manually start it or actually wait for it to automatically run right so step two was about creating and getting ongoing future meter readings but what about the history that you've had for a year or two or even more. So for this, we are using the custom integration I've talked about, import statistics. And what you are seeing is the electricity usage uh, sensors I've had in my statistics, as well as a gas uh, usage statistics sensor. And now we're gonna do together the water history uh, for the water statistic great so let's import water meter history first you have water underscore history dot csv file the beginning of the file looks like this till the end of june 9th in this example and on the far right you will see the column of an increasing sum this is very important you have to follow this file exactly as it looks for things to work out and then let's go see our energy dashboard. As I mentioned, I have already imported energy and gas. And now we are going to go and uh, look at the, again, sensors in the statistics. And now let's go to actions, import from file. And then let's give it the file name, water history, and then perform the action is successful. Let's click a refresh and see if our new water sensor is there. Yes, it is there. And let's go now back to the dashboard, configure it, add the uh, water consumption from statistics uh, sensor. Now save it and let's go back and voila we have the water consumption history loaded and reflected on the energy dashboard which is great this is a one-time setup you don't need to do this again this is a one time for the history let's verify 1.1 is our latest reading and indeed it is 1.1 is correct for the 9th of june great so the final step is automating the readings that we get out of the RPA flow and insert it into the history file. And the target here is to get line number 10 from the left to put it on line number 162 on the right hand side. Okay, so we will do this using a script and let's uh, talk about that right now. So the script is uh, a bash script. It does uh, have a function called process usage and it is dynamic. It has a variable for the utility type, so electricity or water, and then the uh, measurement unit, uh, corresponding measurement unit. And uh, it calculates from the previous reading, the sum, and adds it into the latest row along with the new reading. So for sake of the video, let's run the script manually on the Home Assistant Terminal. 
and we can see that the new values of June 10th have been added. So let's go back to the energy dashboard. We see the latest value is June 9th, which is okay because we haven't yet loaded these into the database. So of course, we're not gonna run the script manually every day. So that's why I created a Home Assistant script that creates or uh, that runs two actions for importing these files. Let's run this on demand for now. It will load all the old history again, replace them and add the new row. So let's see now if Tuesday is loaded. Yes, you can see June 10th has been loaded successfully into the energy dashboard. And the value is 1.65 meter cube, which is uh, correct. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe drop a comment and I'll be happy to answer. Thanks.